The title of Grand Master was first officially awarded in 1950. Now, in 2017, at the St. Louis Invitational, that tradition continues. Eight of the nine rounds have been completed here in St. Louis, and at this GM and IM Norm event, we know at least one person isn't going home empty-handed. 12-year-old Justin Wang clinched his sixth point in this tournament and his first IM Norm against Annie Wang. He had the white pieces. At the start of the round, Justin was all nerves. He was up and walking around constantly looking at his opponent's moves on the digital board outside and then would come back, make his move, and then hurry on back out to the rest of the tournament hall. There is a $15,000 prize fund. The higher you score, the more money you make. The final round is on Wednesday, November 22 at 11 a.m. A playoff, if necessary, will be at 4 p.m. I'm here with International Master John Michael Burke in the Grandmaster Norm section. Today, his game was a draw, but it was the game of the day going in, we knew, uh, against Daniel Gurevich. Um, both players, four and a half points. Now you have five, and the Norm is still attainable for both of you. We already talked to Daniel. Uh, what were your thoughts coming into this game today? Well, today um, I definitely wanted to win because tomorrow I have black and it's a lot tougher to win with black. Uh, he, th he had an idea here where I could play kind of greedily and try and hold on to the pawn. But I think he can play rook d8 and I don't really know what to do here because if I play rook f2 then he can take because of the back rank. <coughs> so I thought I would temporarily give the pawn back, but I'll always win one of them back. And I was considering taking immediately. But I didn't like the line here. He goes rick f1. And now I'm up a pawn, but I'm kind of tied down. And he can try to harassed me by threatening to play bishop e3, and I couldn't really find anything. For example, if I play rook uh, c3, he can go back, and if rook d3, he can now play bishop a3, and now he's threatening to come around to c5. And I couldn't really believe that uh, I could be tied down like this and be better. So I played rook b1. And he took that opportunity to activate his rook, rook e2. And now he, he handed me a few tempi for free. He could have just brought his king in immediately. But he, he started by going the wrong way. And then he realized that I'm just going to play rook f1 and invade on the f file. So he had to bring his king back. And that was very helpful for me. But I, I really don't believe it's winning anyway. Uh, the one opportunity I might have had is to trade rooks. But I th thought he arrived in time. He brings his king to e4. And I had a feeling that I couldn't really win this one. Because if I play like king h3, for example, he can play king f3. And then bishop f6, and my king can't really get in. And uh, I couldn't really believe that it would be winning. Maybe it was a better try than what I did, because I didn't get anything going in the game. But yeah, it was weird, because the whole game I thought it was better, but I couldn't really find any clear improvement for me. Around here, I was even a bit optimistic, because it, it looks like I have everything covered, and then I can maybe play uh, king h3 next and bring my king in. But I think that I have nothing, because king e5 is a very good move. If I play like rook c3, I can't take the pawn, because I'm pinned. And I can't do it here either, because, well, I can do it. Uh, in fact, it might have been the best try. But we get a 2 versus 1, and I don't really believe I have anything close to winning chances here. I can cut his king off, but I really don't know what to do next. He can play like waiting moves. For example, he could play here. 
And if I try and bring my king around, he can play rook f3. And that would trade everything to a dead draw. But probably that's what I had to try. Because the way it went, my idea is to play king g3. But of course, he can play this. And now uh, I have nothing at all. If I play rook c3 here, then he can play here. And again, I can't take the pawn because he can go to d4. And if this, then I'm the one fighting for the draw. But what I did wasn't really any better. Because I'm completely pinned down, he's threatening to, to play bishop d4 anyway. And if I play like king f1, trying to run away, then he can annoy my king with rook b1. If I go king e2, he can go rook b2. And if I play this, th there's no way. I'm completely tied down. Uh, I can't possibly have anything here. So I figure that uh, I have nothing, and I uh, just play g5. And the one way that he can go wrong here is to blunder uh, with this, and then I, I win by miracle. But of course, he didn't do that. He can win my pawn. and. Yeah, it was a draw, and I wasn't very happy with that, but I couldn't really find an improvement for me, funnily enough. So, yeah. Kind of quizzical, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. it's hard to be disappointed when you don't really know where you went wrong. Mm -hmm. so. uh, John, uh, fighting for your second norm, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, November 22nd, is the big day, yeah. and you have the black pieces against Amon Hamilton. I've talked to a lot of people and they're all saying, you know, you can't really play for the norm. You just have to let it come. If it comes, it's great. But with the black pieces, are you gonna play for a win tomorrow? I have to play uh, a bit more dynamically than I normally would. So yeah, I think it's fair to say that I'm gonna play for the norm. Okay. Well, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, let's take a look at the standings right before the final round. The Grandmaster section is quite intriguing. There are five players that could win this event after the ninth round. And out of these five players, two of them can earn a Grandmaster Norm. That's John Michael Burke and Daniel Gurevich. Several key games on Wednesday for the ninth round, Gurevich and Ashwin, a win in that game for either one will guarantee them first place. Also playing the round, John Burke versus Amon Hamilton. And Steven Zirk has to win his game against Raven Sturt to even hope to win this tournament. Uh, I'm here with Justin Wang, one of the uh, Norm hopefuls, now the Norm winner in the International Master section. Justin, what a big day for you. Congratulations on your win today. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, uh, against Annie Wang, um, we were all looking at the board. We were all looking uh, at you and several others that could be winning a norm today and are still in contention tomorrow. And with one day to spare, you got it. Uh, Justin, if you can, take us through the game and show us what happened against Annie and uh, when you knew you had it. I, mean, I didn't really get why she played queen c6, so I don't think it was very useful. All right, h6. After h6, I was planning to play here, but it doesn't really look good for me. She probably did this because she was worried about the g6 pawn. So bf5. I, I was expecting bishop d5 or a move later, uh, earlier. Rook e3, bishop d5. I was expecting that, but now she didn't want to trade bishops. Queen h4, queen d7 looks forced. And now I have basically have to trade, and then and now Bishop C two is good. I I played G four because I wanted to do this. Bishop takes F seven. Then Queen X H seven. King E six. Black escapes, and if I do that, I think it's two rooks in a Bishop versus Queen. So I decided to do this rook. I didn't like her queen f4, so queen g5, e4, took queen d5. Okay, AXB4 
AXP for losers because I, I, I didn't calculate this. Queen B3, then Bishop B1. I I only calculated Bishop C4 when I'm good here. So, AXB4 doesn't look good. I think I should have played, uh, maybe, yeah. I was thinking of G5, Queen of 5, take, take. And then Bishop D5. Probably a four here. Now I didn't. Bishop b one also just wins right away. But she played rook x a two. It may. I don't think I'm so so much worse anymore. If she plays queen f three, I come here. Rook d three, rook e one, queen f three. If she takes, I can. If she takes, I can do this. And then. And I think it's perpetual check. So Queen C five. Um Queen C five. After here I maybe she can play H five. But it still looks like it's a, it still looks like draw. No. Queen five F six Queen X E four. I think this looks like a draw. So, e th she blundered with e3. e3 was a bad move because after queen e5, queen e7, then I could now I could even take, and then I play rook e1. Now she took, and then I go to a winning queen and e. And that that does it. Uh, when I saw you come out of the tournament hall. You asked me how many points to get a norm. Did you know it was six? Did you know you had clinched the IM norm when you beat Annie? I don't know because I thought it was six, but but someone, Carissa said it was like six point five. So I was like, so I it, just wanted to clarify. Many times it is six and a half. It depends on the field. In this instance, it was it was six in your case. I was in the tournament hall whenever the round today began. And I noticed that your behavior at the board, perhaps at stress management, uh, was different from the others. You make a move at the very beginning and then go out into the tournament hall and watch on a screen. Is that less stressful for you than sitting at the board and watching the game? Yeah, I think that's less stressful. Maybe <laughs> I, I'd rather see the bo move go on the screen than she moving. Very interesting. I would not have thought that. Well, uh, Justin, what are your thoughts going into tomorrow? Mm. Tomorrow, I hope I can win tomorrow. But it's, pro but it's probably not going to be easy. Won't be easy going for a win. Justin, thank you for joining me here in the studio. First international master norm, Justin Wang. Let's take a look at the standings in the IM norm section. The International Master Norm section is much more clear cut, with only two players capable of winning and two players in the lead right now. Justin Wang, with six points, clinched his IM Norm today, and International Master Torres Rosas also has six points. These two met in the first round, and it was a draw. So it's up to their respective games in the ninth round to determine who will win this event. And if they both score equally, then there will be a playoff. If there's one place you've got to be on Wednesday, November 22 at 11 a.m., I'll tell you right now. Watch these games live on the internet. It's the final round. Will there be another norm earned? And who will be the winners of the GM and IM norm fields? Check it out on Chess24 and USChessChamps.com.